right, we'll go ahead and get started here. All right, thanks for coming, everybody. We'll call the meeting to order and start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, start with the approval of the agenda. agenda. Any additions or corrections, Paul? No. I have nothing. Brian? No? Okay, I've got a few here. Um, we're going to add A2I pay request number two for the 16th Street roundabout. G1 old business update on 15 7th Street Northwest. Add H3 the Sinwell lot split. And I'm going to move from correspondence the commendation of Gerald Reynolds from Marco Island Police Department to the mayor's report. Now I'll entertain a motion to approve. A motion. Thanks, Ryan. Do I have a second? A second. Thanks, Mel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda. Any questions for administration on consent agenda? You're going to entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Dan. Do I have a second? Second. Thanks, Ryan. All in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, visitors, I don't have any. I've said we don't have any visitors. Mayor's report. I wanted to move because um, we do have a closed session and people tend to leave after that. Um, the commendation of Gerald Reynolds from the Marco Island uh, Police Department. Him and his wife were on vacation and they were trying to help a gentleman that was in need. And uh, we got a really nice letter from them that's in your packet. But just wanted to. I don't, the police chief's not here. I was going to say, just uh, if you see him, tell him thank you. It was a great way to represent him, himself, family, the community, and uh, the skills that they have for that. So I'd like to thank him for his service on that. Don't have any cards for public comment. So public hearing, nuisance ordinance with the vermin. Yep. Okay. Good in your packet. Uh, we're familiar with council as uh, we've discussed this before. Um, just a small change to the uh, code. So in many counties, the public health covers the uh, communities. In Dodge County, they advise us they're not going to, so that's fine. We'll, we need to add into our code, though, to uh, specifically address the vermin concern. Uh, for example, in earlier this year, had a house that had rats, that sort of thing. So as I said, we've discussed this before. This is just your uh, red line copy for that, uh, for that change. So the item we're seeing in red was just basically lifted and dropped in from the county's ordinance, or? Um, it was from uh, different cities, you know, right up. Any questions on that before we open up the public hearing? And I can just read the section. So we would just be adding section two, which is read there. Any the accumulations harboring vermin, accumulations in the open of a discard or used machinery, household appliances, Automobile buys other material in a manner conducive to the harboring of rats, mice, snakes, vermin of any kind, or the rank growth of vegetable, uh, vegetation among the items so accumulate in a manner creating fire, health, or safety hazards from such accumulation are hereby declared to be a nuisance and dangerous to the health, safety, and good order of the city. And then um, number three would be renumbered so uh, that it wouldn't affect anything. So, Okay. I'll go ahead and open a public hearing regarding the nuisance ordinance. If anybody has anything they'd like to comment, please come up to the podium, state your name and address, and share your opinion. Okay, I'll close the public hearing. We take an action on that tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, with that, any other discussion from the council? I think this addresses what the issue that we had had that we thought the county was going to take care of. So I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'd make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thanks, Ryan. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> oh, <coughs> carries. Yes. Thank you. On to the second public hearing moratorium on cannabis. Um, Tim, you just want to give a background on that? Um, sure. We're kind of getting stuck by the state passing this, but they're not going to be approving anything until 2024 anyway. Yeah, so, so um, this is a similar ordinance to what we looked at last time. It would be a temporary ordinance would apply for the time period that's kind of set. Uh, more information has been coming out about this as well over the last um, you know, month or so, really, as the state kind of rolls out what they're looking at. Basically, what their I, the expectation is that the state will actually start issuing licenses in January of 25. So while I'd like to have the public hearing tonight, I don't necessarily know that we need to adopt the, the ordinance because there would not be any uh, licenses issued until then. And so 
I would like us to be prepared if we needed to in the future. <coughs> so we'll have the public hearing if you die. It won't necessarily need to have another public hearing about it. But um, I think that in the meantime, in that 18 months, I'm expecting that staff will be able to come up with guidelines that will allow us to govern this. Um, and some of them are relatively straightforward. You know, the, uh, we're not allowed to not have a location. We can't absolutely stop it. We can restrict the number. Every 12,500 people, uh, there's one. So technically speaking, in Dodge County, they would only be required to allow one. But um, I don't know what, what the county's expectation or if they've been talking about it. So we'll have to see what they're what they're planning for the non-city limits areas of, of the community. But um, I think as planning staff, like I said, over that next period of time, I think we'll be able to come up with some some guidelines. And then the the state will actually be issuing the licenses. So you know I'm not sure how that'll work exactly because they haven't told us yet. They don't have this. <laughs> Department of Cannabis uh, governs made yet, so we don't even know exactly like what the you know with our tobacco licenses. Like for example, we issue the license, but then information gets will get shared with the state. Same thing with liquor licenses. So I imagine it'll be along the lines of those liquor licenses. Well, we'll issue them, and then the department that's at the state will clear them in essence, or they'll issue the license and we'll kind of rubber stamp what they issue. But I don't know that for sure. Uh, one thing I do want to highlight is that they they have authorized. Um, CBD laced drinks. So I know that Kathy has, looked, or has, you know, I think she's already started looking at serving those. In addition, they or there's a specific part of the code that does. Not, I think it was maybe a little bit of a joke at our last meeting, but um, it would allow for a municipal dispensary as well. So uh, if the council wants to consider that, it's something we can talk about over the next. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Any comments or questions before we open the public hearing? Tim. Can you restate what you said uh, when the state's going to be ready to actually issue licenses? Um, what well, we're, we're being told is January of 2025. Okay, so does that mean we kind of effectively have a moratorium until then? Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think we should have a public hearing tonight, but I don't think we necessarily have to adopt this moratorium draft because I think that in that meantime, I'm expecting us to be able to come up with language that should allow for us to have the, hopefully the governance the council's comfortable with before that date. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay, I'll open the public hearing regarding the cannabis issue. If you have anything you'd like to share, just come on up to the podium, state your name and address, and share your opinion. Okay, I'll close the public hearing. There'll be a lot more on this in the next 18 months as the state gets their stuff together, and I think they caused a pretty big panic that we we're going to have to deal with it right away, and then now it's going to be a year and a half. So welcome to Minnesota. Uh, committee report, Planning Commission, rezoning of the Coy Borgstrom House and Shop Properties. And William comes up here. Um, basically what we're looking at tonight, and Planning Commission reviewed this on Monday night, and they did forward a positive recommendation. Uh, we have two properties or two parcels. Um, we're looking at rezoning those from uh, residential to residential commercial, the RC zoning. It's in a transition zone along Highway 34 kind of as you go east out of, out of town. And um, the Planning Commission members, of course, can speak for themselves, but I think that the, the general idea was that it was, uh, was a, wouldn't be a, a, a negative change. So well, Ian, go ahead if you want to address it some more. We're going from commercial, though. Not yeah, they're, right they're actually C2 oh, okay. general so, commercial. So they're, yeah, they're going into RSP, though, so they'd be residential yeah. commercial. That's right. Yeah. So one of the parcels is his house, which would be a non-conforming use in a, in a general commercial district. And so the second parcel, which is just to the south of his house, was the former site of his shop. Um, so what he wants to do is just add another residential use there. And so by rezoning to residential commercial, we would correct for that non-conforming use and also allow for that new residential use on the second parcel. Okay. Any questions for Ian? Okay. Yes. Planning Commission. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Yeah. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution as presented. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Dan. Do a second? Second. Thanks, Mel. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Dwight. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> On to zoning amendment for Reagan outdoor advertising. Yep, so this is actually a city-owned parcel. It's in the south, um, southwest part of town, kind of by the cemetery there, just south of Highway 14. Um, it's an undeveloped parcel right now, and what Reagan Outdoor would like to do is lease that parcel with the intention of constructing and maintaining 
a uh, billboard, an advertising billboard on that parcel. Um, so right now it's zoned uh, DH Development Holding, and now that we're bringing a new use in, we have to rezone it. And so what the recommendation there is a D3 Highway Commercial, which allows for billboards of this type. So it's right on the edge of the city limits, so there's nothing really around over there in that area. Um, there's only one other parcel that is adjoining to this parcel, and it's also zone DH. So uh, very minimal impacts, I would say, to the surrounding area by adding this billboard. Okay. Members of planning and zoning were had one concern that they wanted to make sure <coughs> the lease was approved before we would allow the rezone. And the other was whether the sign was electronic or standard billboard and where it would be located. But that was going to be, they kind of left it to staff to decide where it went. But Yeah. So, I mean, I think the recommendation was to, I think that what we're looking at tonight would also be approval in the rezone pending uh, releases. The city attorney working on those. That's what we'll be with the folks from Reagan. They don't want to give too much, but. I think the city attorney is holding their feet to the fire, which is good because it's a long-term commitment with the lease. And that lease would come to council before we would actually approve it as well. So you'd have a chance to review that. But the, so yeah, the zoning could be pending that approval, absolutely. What term of lease are they looking for <coughs> duration-wise? Well, maybe you want to talk about it. If you can. Uh, <coughs> the one, I believe, there's one billboard that already exists. They're asking for a 25-year lease on that. They're asking for 30 years on the parcel that they would be building a new billboard on, I, if I'm right. I think that's right, yep. <clears throat> I think we are two years into the 30-year lease already that they're asking for. <clears throat> that is a long time. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, my understanding of it, and I'm not someone who deals with these a lot, is, but because their investment in terms of the new lease, that's why they're looking to kind of recoup that over that period of time. So. Do you have anything else? Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution. I'd make that motion. Thanks, Dan. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thanks, Paul. All in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the third one there, the conditional use permit for the fence. Is that yes. Ian? This is at the Fisher Paradise household at 505 10th Street Northeast. And basically what they'd like to do is construct a chain link fence uh, within three feet of their property lines. That would be the east, north, and west property lines. Um, the applicant stated that each of the property owners have already, they've had discussions with those property owners, and each of them have said okay to the fence there. So no issues there, I would say. Um, with that, there's just two conditions that you get that acknowledgement on paper with those access easement agreements, and then second acknowledgement that there's utility easement on there, and then if it ever has to be utilized, then they acknowledge that. Okay. Any other discussion or questions from non planning and zoning? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Dan. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Planning and Zoning, for all you did on those. Uh, old business update on 15 7th Street Northwest. Yep. So the council will recall that we've discussed this property before earlier this spring. Um, lots of items accumulated on that property there. And after we had sent the letter the first time around, um, they did make some efforts to cleaning up that site. Um, however, since then, uh, we're on track towards getting back to how it was originally before we had sent the letter. So today I did send a second letter, just reminding them that they have uh, two weeks I gave them until the next council meeting to clean up the site and mow the lawn now because that was an issue as well. So that's that. And while I was there, I did speak with the neighbor who reported that um, there was an incident of involving a sick raccoon at that property, and uh, the police department was contacted, and I confirmed all of this with the police department. Just so you're aware. 
Did they dispose of the sick raccoon? The raccoon was dispatched. Okay. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. The issue is, I mean, part of it is we've got these folks who are using that sand volleyball court a lot more too. I mean, I've, every night I've been up there, the, the, I don't know if it's the high school girls or who it is, but there's, there's groups of the, you know, it's a female thing, and I mean, it's right there. And unfortunately, I think it may be worse than I've ever seen it before. I mean, it's certainly spread out more. So, I mean, because they put their tarp up, they put up their, which is fine, which is good. If they could keep it all in there, I mean, not a big deal, deal, but it just continues to sprawl out <coughs> further and further. So, I don't know. But hopefully they'll clean it up. Thanks, Ian. Okay, thanks, Ian. Uh, new business, uh, number one, Catech Good Brewing Request, H1. So we've got a request. Uh, yeah, so Mr. Stroh here is requesting to uh, expand his liquor license to allow for um, a patio where he could um, serve alcoholic beverages on because his current liquor license is only limited to what's inside his building. Right. And we've got similar, the, the, Legion. the Legion requested that a few years ago, so that we just need to be consistent of whatever we did that's there. Right. So whatever that, whatever we did with that should just be applied here. Yeah, and that's what we're basically looking at, would be to okay. include the entire patio area in addition. So if you recall, like on the west side of the, the Legion, they took part of their parking lot and they kind of sort of fenced it in to a certain extent, put tables out. So yeah, similar thing here, it's just an amendment to his uh, liquor license that would encompass that. Okay. One spot on the northeast driveway, you'll s <clears throat> on the second picture, you'll see there's three parking stalls added in there. But according to plan and zoning, there can only be two spots there. Yeah, and that's because they're essentially, you would be backing out into the highway there. And so our code only allows for two parking spaces where you can back out directly into the street like that. And Mr. Stroh did uh, supply a permit from the county because part of the parking area that he's expanding would be in the county right-of-way there. And I did confirm with the county engineer that uh, they would be allowed to um, pave those parking areas within the county right-of-way as is required in our ordinances. Okay, perfect. Two things, just uh, this is an open conversation here. Um, the trail that we currently have by Lions Park that goes up to Sunset Trail does end there at, um, is that second there? Corner of second and 34, yep. Yeah, on second and 34, and when the county engineer reached out to me, they, he did ask if there was a planned trail to connect that to the new roundabout because that does have some better pedestrian and bike facilities on it. So that would be like a you know good connection to make. Uh, would it potentially be there? I think our comp plan actually shows it going up Maston Creek uh, by Plaza 57 and continuing on the creek. Now how viable that is with the kind of the full build out you know, it's going to be pretty tough to do that, but I think that's something to keep in mind and that that affects his parking. And then the other thing we talked about was on 34, there's currently parking. Along 34, we talked about converting that potentially into bike lanes at our um, uh, planning meeting in March there. Um, and that was one thing I'm waiting for the county engineer to hear his schedule on doing some resurfacing on 34, or maybe integrating or having the discussion uh, with the public on uh, converting that parking to to bike lanes on each side of 34, which one of the advantages we had when we looked at that was it was really underutilized. There's really no parking uh, from the intersection of 57, 34, all the way up to the Sunset Trails. We thought that was kind of an easy project to integrate. I don't know, Scott, how much parking you expect on 34? Is it going to be, a, is it a lot once we're done with construction here? We get quite a lot of street parking on there, guys. That might be something we got to consider as a council of, you know, what do we do? Because that um, could be a hindrance to the business. Well, I know when Scott met with us uh, on Monday night, he indicated that, you know, he thought that the trail extension could be a real positive to his business. Absolutely. So I think at some point in time that would be, you know, we would have to, to delineate exactly. I know you mentioned with the roundabout, those trail kind of wings are going to kind of come off of the, the roundabout a bit. So just one thing to think about, yeah. Yeah, so that connection that's an off road trail right which is what we have now that's kind of one option the other option was to continue the the bike lanes through that corridor i mean we could and the, the real connection that we were looking for was lions park up the sunset trail we have a gap in there and people use this walk on the road now relatively newer road or probably not narrowing that road up and putting an off off trail system in uh, just due to the new new newness of the road and it's in good shape um, so we did look at that as an option of 10 foot on each side and eliminate parking there because really it's not utilized from Sunset Trail, which is what, 8th, down to Lions Park, and the question is, well, how do we just continue right to the roundabout? 
um, again, because it's was generally not utilized until we have a business here that seems to be utilizing it. So there's something we have to discuss if we move something forward. So um, it seemed like a real easy fit when before this kind of use came in here, and now we're looking at proposing something that you know potentially could limit the off-street parking on the private property. So how does that kind of all play and work? Um, does it change? You know, moving forward, it's something I think we have to talk about. Okay. Just want to have the whole conversation so we don't miss the other missing pieces or things we discussed previously, so. Okay. So, just work with. Well, so what we're looking for tonight Stroke. would be to approve this amendment to the liquor license. Okay. And then I think, uh, obviously, once the roundabout's done, we can sort of maybe take a look at what configuration of, of extension of trail connection would be best. I mean, right. to me, the ideal thing would be to bring the actual off-street trail along the south side of 34 and connect it into the roundabout. I mean, that would make the most sense to me because it looks like we have enough round, of, you know, we have a plan right away with the county there. But it may be that we have to do something else temporarily on the street. Okay. All right. All right. Does putting the trail on the street impact whether or not the county is willing to allow Scott to use part of that right-of-way for parking? I think the county's just not going to care. They're going to say, okay. figure it out with your private business. They've been relatively open to say whatever the city wants. They just didn't want any added maintenance costs. That's what, what we talked about. Do we add physical barricades out on right. 34 and the maintenance issues? We kind of wanted to keep it simple. Um, that led us to the um, ultimately going to be a bike in both directions with no vertical elements, no bollards, no jersey barriers, concrete barriers, mm -hmm. et cetera. So that's kind of where, where I think this was going. Yeah. Um, not as good as a trail from a pedestrian walking perspective, but still added some value because people are using it now. So it's actually given the better is kind of what I was hearing at our last planning meeting. So um, I think second could be a attractive parking area because there's not going to be a lot of traffic. Obviously, once we're in normal operations and the roundabout's open and 57's open, but if the business is using 34, that's got to be part of the decision on both parties. So, yeah. but I don't think at the end of the day the county is going to care really. They're just going to say build it safe and build it right and do what you want. It's in town. Just make sure the roads are open for our county traffic. So, okay. Any other questions? If, you, if we were to change this, do we have to put any stipulation in there and the barricades for the for his patio? And the liquor light or no actually separate? the state doesn't require those uh, okay. that's right it's uh, it has to be delineated I think he's doing that with a light with lights right now but other than that they actually and Linda brought it she put it pretty succinctly the state said you know they don't want somebody running back into a building that's on fire to get sure. out of the building that's on fire so yep. and that makes a lot of sense <laughs> so that makes sense okay any other questions Entertain a motion to approve the request to amend the liquor license. Make the motion. Thanks, Ryan. Do I have a second? A second. Thanks, Mel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, number two, event permit for Cast and Fire Relief Annual Festival Dance. Uh, this is a little bit of a change because the fire hall is going to be being demolished. So they're going to have that at the Legion property, and you have the map <coughs> there. So we just have to be able to approve that. Are there any questions? Yeah, originally they had been working, they had wanted to close Main Street, and I, I talked to, to Joe and to Chris Selgin, and I kind of discouraged them from that, just because I think that, that we've had Main Street closed a lot already. And especially if the movie theater is up and running, I mean, it, I don't want to impact them more than we have to. So they submitted this revised plan where they're asking to close the side street there yep. in front of the Legion, which I, I think should be adequate number of s space for them. So. And if the road construction project's not done by then, we don't want to have Main Street closed either. Yeah, I don't want to think about that, but yes, absolutely. Okay. Just saying. <laughs> um, and then the only thing is, I mean, where it's at before, there's noise, obviously, right? And people are used to that at that time. Um, but they may want to let the people know that live in that apartment right across the street because there's already been complaints about the Legion having things in the evening from a few residents there that call the police department pretty regularly whenever they hear noise. So just let them know that this was approved and please don't call the police. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'll, I'll ask Joe to communicate with the uh, apartment complex and we can follow up with them too. Okay. Yeah, that may be, a, I'm sure that'll be an issue. Yeah, hopefully it's just one night and, you know, people will have to get through it. So. Yep, okay. Any other questions, comments? It's that night, but it's also Sunday afternoon as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? Are they planning to do the... Uh, as far as I know, yes. So the noise ordinance only goes till 10. This is Sunday from gotcha. noon to 6. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the noise ordinance part would we have to do gotcha. later. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Entertain a motion to approve. 
Make that motion. Thanks, Dan. I have a second. Second. Thanks, Mel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we added number three, the Sinwa lot split. So this is at 104 4th Ave Northeast, and what Mr. Sinwa would like to do is split his lot into uh, three different lots. Um, it was originally platted as three lots, but somewhere in between when it was platted and today, he joined the lots for taxation purposes. But now what he would like to do is construct uh, some residential uses. His, his house is kind of in the middle there, so it would be lot two. But what he wants to do is add residential uses on one and three, it would be after the lot split. And so I've reviewed them according to the applicable standards for sizes and building line and street line and all of that. And I found that what's proposed in these certified surveys is that they're, they're, what he's proposing is in line with what the standards are. Any question? Is he recutting them the exact same way they are on the original plat, or is that changing at all with the new survey? Yeah, the lines are the same, but it seems like the, some of the surveyor angles were kind of different. <laughs> yeah. So I think those original ones were 72 foot, weren't they? Yeah, something like that. Okay. I've got the exhibits listed with the resolution there. Any questions for Ian? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Thanks, Paul. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Dan. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank <coughs> you. Thanks, Ian. Uh, administrator's report. Okay, we've got a couple things tonight, so uh, I'll go through my report first. Uh, let's see here. Uh, planning and zoning, we've talked about most of that already. We've got the uh, post board adopting some new rules there. So um, as you know, there have been some difficulty in hiring officers. And I, I hope that these rules don't increase that difficulty for, for small departments like ours throughout the state. But um, they're especially, it sounds like disclosure of social media accounts, the pl applicant's going to have to consent and disclose all accounts. So I'm not sure how that'll work. But um, you know, hopefully it'll improve the, the police service in Minnesota. Um, included tonight, we talked about the uh, marijuana timeline. So, um, our goal is to uh, to have the city side of things covered well before the state authorizes those permits. Mm -hmm. So I mean that's that's certainly the goal. Um, the groundbreaking ceremony. We have some materials I included in the packet there, so you can take a look at those. We're expecting to have uh, some of that stuff mostly electronically. We're not planning on budgeting much for this, but we would like to see if we can have a good uh, a good attendance for that. So we're if those dates absolutely don't work for for you, let me know because we'd like to have a good um, you know, presence there for the groundbreaking in early August. Um, it sounds like it's going to be kind of a fun event for uh, for folks, and certainly we're going to try and get some good, um, good positive um, coverage out of this. Uh, the chamber hosted an event uh, around about Cass, and last week uh, I attended and and I uh, got to go to one of the ribbon cuttings that was up there too. So it's always great to see new businesses, uh, especially in Main Street. Um, it'll it'll lead interestingly into what Ian's working on this summer with his parking. Um, it's good to have a parking problem when we have enough businesses that are, are you know, needing more spots. Uh, it wasn't quite as well attended as last year, but uh, it sounded like it was steady throughout the afternoon from what the chamber tells me. Um, and then tonight we'll have a talk about the work from home policy. Hopefully we can finalize that tonight. Um, then there are a couple other items in your packet. A couple of items we discussed uh, previously. Uh, as you're aware, the, the county has uh, requested to detach that property up on the northwest part of uh, the city. So included in that, um, um, Jim sent down a, a detachment agreement that would uh, allow us to serve those properties um, with uh, sewer and water if a building does get built at some point in the future. So I think that's a, that's a beneficial thing. So um, basically what, what I'm looking for is uh, approval of that agreement that's included in your packet tonight, as well as the uh, resolution there um, with the, uh, the detachment. Any questions on that resolution that came from the county? I, for me, it covered everything we needed. That we're, we have the easements. We have the ability to serve that area. Yep. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Make the motion. Thanks, Ryan. Do I have a second? I'll say. Thanks, Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution passes. 
And you got some sample. Yeah, some sample PR material. There. So we'll just just want to let you know that's coming. I did have one other thing I wanted to just talk about. Um, it was uh, just wanted to see council's feedback on it. Uh, we had a uh, a person who owns in a, a building on Main Street. Their uh, their upstairs tenant, uh, I guess, had a, thought there was a carbon monoxide issue. So um, the the fire department was dispatched, and and uh, the chief shared with me the. Um, the components of that call, so in the billing and those, that sort of thing, and the 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 landlord, the owner of the building, is probably going to get stuck with the bill because the the tenant isn't going to pay it, um, and and that uh, landlord's asking that we waive the bill. Um, I know in the past we we haven't typically done that, but uh, I let the landlord know that I would bring it to council and see if if we wanted to make any changes to that policy or not. In this case, it was not founded; it was an unfounded carbon monoxide. The, the tenant felt faint, and they she had she had turned on a apparently a carbon monoxide detector that was outdated and it t tested positive. The, the police department responded, or the fire department responded. They went and tested it and it wasn't, you know, testing positive. So, um, you know, realistically, you know, I think the fire department documented all the things they did. So I think the charges are justifiable. But um, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that uh, I, you know, to see where council's at with it. In the past, um, there's been sort of a mixed bag. When um, my predecessor was here, she would waive these charges occasionally, and I haven't done that since I've been here. But I want to make sure that council, you know, was providing some clarification on what you want to do with it. That's a tough one for myself personally. My opinion, <coughs> we can't just because when the trucks roll and the the first responders respond. I mean, we're charged for insurance and everything else in that same call. I, my opinion, we can't. But that's my opinion. We can. Take care of his opinion. What kind of money are we talking about? Uh, it's five hundred twenty dollars for a carbon monoxide response. For a call, I mean, they, they responded. It's per that person, person truck or, or vehicle that goes, there's a yeah. it's kind of a set charge. If one truck goes, it's X amount of dollars, and if three people are on it, it's X amount of dollars, whatever it is. So, these people are giving up their time, and the city's got expense. And the fire department has made carbon monoxide monitors available to renters. Yeah in the past, <coughs> so the renter or the landlord could have had a functioning in-date carbon monoxide detector on premise, which would have alleviated the whole thing. Well, and I don't know if... But we don't want to discourage people from calling because they don't want to pay a no, fee. But you have homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance that usually covers any kind of medical fire calls. Not medical, but maybe fire call, and this was a fire call. Yeah, without deductible? Yeah, because you're paying a sub line on your insurance for that. Everybody pays it. You can adjust how much coverage you got, which most insurance companies recommend you go higher because it is like, more expensive nowadays. But a $500 bill fits in most insurance. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest issue is that typically, I mean, if it was a, a bill in arrears, which this is, you know, we would, we would, we would go after the, the tenant because they're the ones who made the call. In this case, you know, and I, I spoke with the landlord, I said, you know, we can put it on revenue recapture for up to a year you know, before we would actually have to assess it to the to the taxes, because obviously the landlord's the one paying the taxes and doesn't want to pay the bill. And, you know, he kind of equivocated. And I don't think that he had the information of, that you need to put into revenue recapture, which is you need to have their Social Security number, because it, you know, if they're going through and, um, you know, getting a tax return or something like that, the state flags it. And we do that with the utility bills. We actually change the utility billing format so that electrical charges as well as water and sewer could be assessed back to the actual, um, you know, person and the landlord versus just one or the other, because you know, obviously we don't want to stick the landlord with it. But um, I just think it's important to be consistent, and um, you know, it's certainly up to council. Though you know, in the long run, there is a cost because we did deploy. You know, if it's a if it's a false alarm, you know, and they get called off, typically we don't charge for those. In fact, we've had a couple where it was like the hotel, like something went haywire, and they went in there and they said, "Oh, it's just an electrical fault." In this case, somebody actually tested and called, and they responded. And so, um, anyways. We want to make a decision on tonight, but I wanted to bring it to you, see if you have any thoughts on it, and certainly maybe at our next meeting, if you've got any more feedback, I'd appreciate it then. Because I think it would be good for us to, you know, have one policy and, 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 and kind of be consistent with it for all the residents. That's part of the risk you run as a renter is, are your tenants paying the bills? In, in this case, you know, the landlord indicated that tenant that was there is no longer there. So, I mean, it also behooves landlords to do a good job with their tenants. In terms of making sure that they're they're having the proper information so that they can go after them if there isn't a rear <coughs> bill like that. So, but 
that's beside the point. So anyways, uh, if you can give me some feedback, or what I'll do is to, I'll email out the information I have from Joe and from Amy Hanvick, the PD related to the building and also the, the, the cost and that sort of thing. And you can take a look at that as well. Okay, thanks Tim. Engineer's report, you want to just give us an update on the construction, timelines, give us the data that'll be done. <coughs> about a minute or? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll close with that if you're asking about 57. Um, okay. Just yeah, I'll just go through uh, the list, quick update, um, nothing formal tonight. Um, just so you guys know, we are uh, starting the bonding bill. You know, was, we talked about last meeting. Um, half of that was that flood control project. Half of it's uh, reconstruction of South uh, West Cass. And so internally, we started some discussion on permitting and how that's going to go because that's going to be the most difficult um, item we're going to have to deal with and how we're going to set that schedule of that project. So. Uh, we got that out there. Oh, and then also talking to uh, uh, Mike Bubani and the financial stuff and how we're going to fund it and whatnot. So we're having that conversation, so staff will be working on that just as an FYI. Um, the sewer um, I-9 reduction project, that's sealing up some of our sewer, the casting replacement, some spot repairs, and some lining of the sewer. Uh, we're wrapping that project up for kind of a fall into spring project. Uh, we got some work we got to do on the highways that have detours on them, so we're just kind of waiting for things to clear up there, so we're working on that. Tower, um, electrical next week, um, they're going to do some restoration before uh, the fair, so that'll be kind of all good to go by the fair, um, and they'll take down the old tower after the fair. We don't need them taking down stuff when they're trying to get that pit gate, so um, that's the schedule on the tower. Uh, Vail got paved today, so I think they're hydro seated by the end of the week, so that'll be uh, done, but we, uh, we got the apartment in there and open, and that was a little, a little tough to get done, but we got it, um, and it's getting paved today, or was paved today. Uh, Safe routes of school, we still got to wrap up 16th Street and 5th Street, so um, we're not going to close that intersection. We're just going to reduce some of the curb lines and pen ramps there, so that'll still be open and everything. We'll be able to get through there. We need to get that done here, so that's going to happen soon. Uh, they're going to move the crew from Byron on Highway 14 there, so as soon as that our cut's done, they're going to finish that up, so that's uh, wrapping up on our side of things. Um, 57 in the roundabout. Uh, Tim mentioned we were at the chamber meeting. Um, just had a booth there with MnDOT. MnDOT staff was actually up at the school that day teaching the driver's ed kids, cl driver's ed's class, and the kids on how to drive to roundabouts. So, thought that was good to MnDOT to reach out to the school and talk to roundabouts to the kids and how to drive through them. So, um, we've been telling people early April um, is what the contractors um, talked about with MnDOT. Early April. I'm sorry. <laughs> early August. Excuse me. That's a long time. Yeah, it is a long time. So, uh, early August on finishing up 57. Okay. So. Um, that's a date um, that's been out there. I don't think MnDOT and the contractor worked on any, anything officially. Um, you know, they did start an April 1st start date was the plan, and I think by the time load restrictions got off, I think there was a couple, maybe even three weeks by the time they got started on load restrictions. Wait. So, Yeah, so it was a while. So they're talking about that and just continuing moving on. The sewer, I think, is done, along with all the services. There's like one water service to put in, and then all the our utilities will be done, and then they'll start on, they have started on storm sewer, and get the storm sewer in, and they're going to start cutting the road. Um, the roundabout is on schedule uh, moving forward. Um, Mr. Schutte is working out potentially putting a service in along with Quick Trip, so we're working through that and kind of integrating that in. So we're trying to accommodate the future growth uh, in the area and kind of working all in the same same uh, area and same uh, sandbox there. So um, that's about it for that. Um, one other thing, Stagecoach Trail, we talked about it again at the workshop. Tim and I are going to be setting up a call with um, City of Byron. They're looking at the Stagecoach Trail and interested in connecting uh, Oxbow um, to the city of Byron and Byron into Casson, so um, and then maybe Oxwell even into uh, Douglas Trail. So that's that is the plan of the Stagecoach Trail, which is a uh, DNR accepted regional plan or trail plan that they have kind of on the books, but it's been sitting there. And um, when we previously talked to the DNR, was this needs to be a city pushed issue <coughs> with the DNR to get the funding. So um, we're not spending any money yet, but uh, Byron's interested in having that conversation. So Tim and I are going to be talking to them and potentially talking to the DNR and formulating how things could move forward and potential action for the council in the future. So um, I just Googled, mapped it. It's about six miles to Oxford Park, so I think it'd be a cool amenity for the town, and obviously Manorville will be connected in because our trail's connected to them, so it'd be cool. be a little bit of a hike for young kids, but nice to have that option. And I think for the bikers, it certainly would be something that would be very interesting, and we have a lot of folks who do bike, and just uh, seeing the trail usage is really spiking, so that's good. Absolutely. I think it would be a great asset to the community. So. Um, again, nothing, just giving you guys a heads up, keep you guys in loop, that's been discussed, so. Um, questions? That was all I had. So just to be clear, to clear up the rumor that's going around town, the state did not mismeasure and don't, doesn't have to put a stoplight back in, the, the roundabout will fit at Main Street. Uh, yeah, it's going to fit. Okay. Yeah. 
I heard that at church last week, yeah. Oh, it's all, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of people, oh, I heard the state misfeasured and their camp backs are down, whatever. Okay. It's going to be a small little roundabout, but it'll be <laughs> it's fine. So. Mini. Thanks. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Uh, personnel, uh, we have recommendation to hire probationary firefighters Dayton Peterson and Levi Rolin. So we'll take that recommendation from the fire chief, and I will entertain a motion to approve that. Make the motion to approve. Thanks, Ryan. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thanks, Smell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, and thanks to Dayton and Levi for joining the department. Uh, the pilot, uh, number two, pilot uh, flexible work policy. Tim. So, we, including your packet, we have, I think, hashed this one maybe to death. But uh, we've got this final draft, and, and there's some red line changes uh, based on feedback we received from the uh, department heads. Um, and there's a council action sheet I think uh, the city clerk also forwarded out some information to you last week on responses. Um, generally, most department heads did not feel they would be able to utilize it, and I think we kind of knew that. But um, it was good to hear from them what their thoughts were, so we got the, uh, some of them were somewhat sarcastic, but uh, I still appreciate the feedback. And we've got some, some really good staff people, so I always have to remember that. Um, but uh, the, uh, basically, I mean, I think it'll give us some flexibility. It, um, it, you know, one thing I want to highlight is interesting, and I mean, it's just very clear. Flexible work arrangements may not be possible for some positions. So it, it just is some positions just this will never apply to. And we also um, think that, you know, it, it may be utilized <coughs> primarily, you know, for, 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 for office staff. Um, I know Charlie said that he was not interested in doing public works from home. He'd much rather be in the truck or something like that. But um, anyway. So you've got this copy here um, with the changes that were been made to eliminate some of the, um, the non-exempt because that didn't seem like it was going to be feasible either with uh, the notes that the, the clerks added there. Um, and then I did add in, um, based on the recommendation from the uh, city attorney, that ergonomics guide. So that your last page there was the ergonomics guide from the league. So um, <coughs> I'm, I'm hoping we, uh, if possible, if the council has any other actions or changes they want to make, we can do those. Otherwise, we're looking for approval tonight. Okay. Any questions for Tim? Comments? Um, did you look at, like in, in Rochester, they only made it so they can only do it on a Wednesday from work from home? Because part of their concern was that people were going to work from home on a Friday or Monday to extend their weekend and say they're working from home. So I Yeah, mean, and I think the, the final, what, what it all comes down to is, It'll be case by case basis, and it'll be based on the needs of the workflow mm -hmm. and uh, what's best for the city. I think that's really my goal, and that may mean that it uh, something like a Wednesday makes sense, and it may mean that it, you know it, is, it ends up being a different day of the week. You know, one thing well, we know sure. that it won't be all the employees, obviously, because we have to still be making sure with a small staff that everything's adequately staffed. So, um, I think that that's you know the biggest takeaway I have is that it, it'll definitely vary depending on the situation. And it is a pilot, so if we approve that, then it can, you know, it's a work in progress. It can be changing at any time. So that's right. If things aren't working, we'll certainly bring that back to council. Make changes as we go. That's right. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to approve. Okay. Thanks, Mel. We have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thanks, Paul. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Carries. Thank you. Um, on to the attorney. Uh, we have a closed session for possible land transaction. Is that going to be recorded? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Chris. Yes. Can I get a question here to Brandon yep. before yep, uh, we kick him out? Yep. yep. Um, I was looking at the department head meeting reports and the flow amounts for what we pumped out of wells versus what we treated. And for the last three reports, the amount we've been treating at the treatment plant's been increasing, but the pumping has been staying relatively flat. Is there a reason for that? Well, so what we pump, we have some water that is irrigated, right, that doesn't go back in the sewer. So that'd be a net out of the water system, which I'm assuming we're going to experience that here this month. Um, and then the other thing um, would be I and I, right? So comes out of your faucet, it's metered, so it's accounted for, so that would be in the pumping record, um, and then it goes into the sanitary sewer, then obviously goes to the treatment plant. If there's any leakage that I and I we talked about, when we talked about the I and I reduction project, right. that's why we would have water that is a uh, larger amount treated than what is pumped out of the wells. Yeah, so this month it says 
and mm -hmm. coming into a you know spring thaw, it's always low, and then when it rains, it obviously peaks. So our treatment plant experience is you know four or five times the amount in a large rain event than what it would on a normal day. So I'd have to look at the record and see why it'd be increasing now because it should be decreasing with the irrigation. Well, that's it's going to be up, and then it's been dry, so our you know our groundwater isn't there, right? Because yeah, it's dried out. So this last one from May says that they treated 46 million gallons. And the prior month they treated 35 million gallons, and the month prior to that they only treated 20 million gallons. And obviously, like you said, there was a thaw probably in there. Thaw, but the yeah. point of the I and I, I think, is supposed to be preventing that thaw from getting into the yeah, treatment be. plant, and it's kind of going. It's looking really bad in the wrong direction right now. Yeah, I. I so I don't think that was the case because I I know the treatment plant guys had alluded to that they thought that the I and I and the the peak stirring the wet times was getting better than it was before. Okay. Because I, mean, I, I got to look at the time on it. From in the last two months, we've doubled how much the treatment plant is, has been treating, and they've only increased, you know, maybe 20% on how much they pumped out of the wells. Yeah, I mean, one question I'd have, and I don't know, would be year over year. So, I mean, what I, right. I think what maybe what we could do is, because, you know, February, March, April, you know, they're all going to be different, right? But seeing what we did last year at the same time, and obviously weather has an impact, but that's something we can probably get from Dave too, and, and, and maybe that's what we need to do, Brandon, is yeah, to check and see. I'd just like to see, if, see some results from this INI project, because sure. just looking at the last three months, it doesn't, doesn't look yeah, like I mean, it's I mean, I expect well. the numbers to look very strange this next month, partly because we have a ton of water being pumped. I mean, that number should drop because people are pumping a ton of water, but then right. I know the irrigation in town has been h huge. You know, so I mean, frankly, it'll be a good month for right. the water utility so as long as we have water. So the uh, aquatic center was filled, right? Right. And then obviously there's not been any rain, so people have been watering their yards. So we would expect the amount of water pumped should go up, but the wastewater should stay flat. Yeah, I mean, also these numbers, I mean, so I would expect this next report probably to be closer than this one is. Okay. But, but like I said, it's all about year over year, not month to month, because it's all going to vary. Yeah. But look at, we had probably our, our, what our second or third snowiest winter ever. Mm -hmm. So we had more break up this year and we did have a little bit rain in April and May we did first part of May we're early spring so it yeah. might have been that extra snowpack or I mean so I mean I see compared to last year yeah no I mean I think that's really interesting is it year to year is it getting better so every actually every day they calculate how much well they gotta continue to actually graph but they report every day how much they treat and pump so I mean they have the record so we can go back for a long as long as we need to to go back and look at records a lot of times they'll plant plot years together over months and then you can see spring thaw, and then July 2019, it would have went up over that month because of the, the flooding that we received, and you can watch it. And then the winter, we, we kind of level out and bottom out in the winter with respect to flood the treatment plant. And then water use obviously peaks in the summer, so we can correlate that back to previous years and start looking at that it. That might be interesting yeah. to, so to see. So. I think, I mean, some of the, the I&I &I, you know, program that we have, a lot of the deficiencies haven't quite been uh, completed yet. I don't know, I'd have to look at those percentage of non-compliant houses um, the bigger fixes had a year to fix them, so that they were just inspected. You know, they they may not have been done yet, or they're going to be. I think done. we were at like 90 for the inspections, but yeah. the ones that were non-compliant, the 10 percent of those, um, some were some pumps that had 30, 60 days to get done. I think it was 30 days, um, but if you had to dig up your yard, you had you had a whole year. So there's a little bit of a lag there. So as we do these, you're going to eventually see it. Um, in addition, to that, that was on the private side, right, which accounts for a fair amount of it. It's kind of the easiest to get out and most cost effective. Uh, as I mentioned, this other I and I project and doing that is going to help too. Uh, we're going to line some sewer. We're going to do some spot repairs. We're worried about a sewer collapsing and then replacing a ton of manholes through town where that open pick holes. So if you drive up and see the open pick holes where water can get in, so we're going to replace uh, some castings in the the drainage way that feeds into Maston Creek. We've seen all the backups. The northwest part of town that's newer, we've kind of left that alone because we can deal with that. We haven't any problems or less problems up there than we have along the Maston Creek drainage way. And if you remember our, our growth area, and we're going to talk about some growth here in a bit, um, that area to the south and east that is kind of right for growth all drains of that same sewer. So um, we want to get, get that sewer out and those peaks out when it rains and it's wet in the spring so we're not uh, surcharging into our basement. So to your point, um, we can start looking at that and plot some of that stuff out and see what it looks like. I mean, I will say one thing that, that I noticed, and, and Dave and I have talked about this before, when the first year I was here we had a 32% water loss. And last year we were able to get that down to 14%. So we've managed to have the water loss, which is really good. 
know, my goal obviously is to get into single digits, and I think with the Main Street project we might be able to do that because it'll it'll help with a lot of our, a lot of our wire leaks. But, but yeah, yeah, why don't we and take a look? And I'm not sure how water loss works in the pump. So what he's referring to is water water loss, which is not a sewer thing, right? So it's how much you pump versus how much you build, right? How much you build? Yep. Yeah. So we have like we back out a lot of times like flushing hydrants, but if our mains are leaking um, or if we have um, yeah just other water water loss that's not accounted for um, that we don't build. So. That's somewhat related. We have to look into how that works up. And I don't know that they're reporting. Are they just reporting their actual wells, right? Yeah, from the wells. So <coughs> it, the water loss probably is not part of that conversation. So, so is that something we can expect in, in an upcoming meeting? We can get kind of yeah, a report on how we're doing. It's not a problem. I don't know if that's something from you or yeah, Charlie probably, would have to do. Yeah, probably works. We had, you know, we do do wastewater treatment plants. We get that information from them. And I can get you the monthly yeah. report too. I mean, I get a copy of that from day or a month on how much they pumped each day and the water they've received, like the rainfall. Yeah. And we do see whenever it rains, we see a spike yeah. in treatment at the plant because it's infiltrated. We've, still. we've gone like over a month now without hardly any rain. rain if, if I any. think your next report to be pretty low. Well, bad rain. I think it was last Did you? fall. Did you last fall was pretty dry. They said it was like historically yeah, low flows at the treatment plant, which is a combination of our I and I work, but it was also very dry last fall. Like they were worried, like it wasn't going to operate because if you starve it of water, it doesn't work, right? Right. It's been yeah, yeah, yeah. a little more than that way. Yeah. <laughs> we're wasting no, math. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> to your point, um, we can we can look at that and we'll map it out and see what it looks like historically. Okay. Now maybe, maybe it's changed. Maybe it was really dry in the fall and they had really historic lows, and now they're back to worrying about I and I again. I don't know. I just haven't I haven't heard that, so I don't think that's the case. But um, my staff, you know, I yeah, I, like you said, I so. I looked at the one this month and I was like, that is a lot of stuff being treated and obviously with the, what we've been getting from Manville has been going up but even taking that out it's still been increasing pretty quick over the last couple months so it's just caught my attention Perfect. good question anything else okay we are going to have a closed session for the possible land transaction that will be recorded uh, when we're done we'll reopen the meeting so we're going to go ahead and go to that closed session right now can you help me to stick around or um, I think it's I think it'd be helpful if you don't mind. Yeah.